Okay, today what I'd like to demonstrate uh, is how to get a stuck tape out of an IBM LT01. These tape drives are 12 to 15 years old, and at times uh, there is data on these particular tapes, and it can't leave the facility, but a tape is stuck in it. So, in this particular case, we're dealing with a customer that has an auto loader, and the auto loader has a cage around it and the tape drive itself will have to be removed from that cage. Once you have it removed, um, first thing you do is remove the bezel. There are two screws on the side, one screw on top. Once the bezel is removed, you've got a screw here and a screw here that needs to be removed and two screws in the back. So, for simplistic sake, we've already taken this off. Now to kind of gently Move this back and forth, get it off. Kind of comes up, if you pull it straight up, it's kind of the way to get it off. Okay, um, to demonstrate the principle on how to remove a stuck tape, I think it's important that you understand the concept of what happens when you load a tape. So, this fella is ready to be loaded, and we're going to put the tape in and give it just a little push. Now mechanical things start to happen. This gear turns, it picks up a leader pin, and that leader pin is wrapped up on this take-up spool back here. The tape and the pin is inserted in a slot there. It's gonna go back and forth and load, um, yeah, maybe 20 or 30 times around. It will find the beginning of the tape, and it says, I'm happy, I'm ready for data. When the command is given to the tape drive to remove or, or to eject the tape. I'm going to manually do it here. There's a little button here. Press the eject button. And what happens in here, commands are processed by the tape drive. Uh, it's going to start spinning this back reel. And as soon as it gets to that junction where that leader pin and leader assembly is um, exposed so it can come out. It stopped here. Now these gears turn and it rotates that around there and it keeps on rotating it and ejects the tape. This little wiper comes up and down and cleans the head. I'm going to do this one more time. It's going to take a little while to load but again what we're seeing is what's happening with these gears. It's slowly turning. The leader pin comes across. It goes looks for the beginning of the tape. Now keep an eye on this pin assembly that comes across here and watch how this little gear on this motor spins this shaft, turns these other two gears, and then turns uh, the larger shaft. So I'm doing it twice. The eject. It's processing the commands to eject. Once that happens, the spool, take-up spool spins until it gets to where the leader and pin are housed, which is it's going to be right about here. Now this gear will start to turn and pull that out and pulls it across. It keeps on turning and it ejects the draw, ejects the media. Okay? So what I'm going to do is simulate how to do this manually. Okay? So I'm going to load the tape one more time. And once it gets loaded and everything's ready for data, I'm going to turn the power off, okay? You have no power on this drive. Um, you can't get the tape out. If you could power this up on the bench, let me just back up for a second. You might want to hold this reset button or the eject button down for 15 seconds, okay? Count 15 seconds. And then let it out. Possibly it'll reset the board and the tape might come out. You're in good shape. But probably not. All right. So now we have no power on this tape drive. We rotate the LT01 tape. We have a T10 Torx head. And we insert that into the hole on the bottom here. And that um, hole actually will spin uh, the spindle that will take the tape up. Now, what you need to do is to spin this clockwise. If I go counterclockwise, it's not right clockwise, okay? So this is going to take a little while to do, so just kind of bear with me. 
Um, you want to continue spinning this, you know, until you feel some pretty stout resistance. Okay? Then you sort of stop when you feel that. It's going to take about 60 seconds. Now, if you've got 2,600 feet of tape on that take-up rail, this is going to take you a long time. Okay? But anyways, let's assume you don't have that much tape on there and you want to get this out. So you're going to continue to rotate that. And that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, now I've got tension, see? Tension. So what I need to do is stop here, rotate the tape, drive this way. And now mechanically, when we demonstrated the load and unload, you saw these gears starting to turn. Without power, you've got to manually turn these gears, okay? So on this particular model, it appears to me that I need to rotate this um, um, this way. And I failed to mention I want to keep it on the side here too so you can see that I need to take the tension up in this tape. You see how loose this is? So I want to reinsert this here. I just put it down so that you could see it. I want to reinsert it and keep the tension across here. As I spin this, um, I'm putting tension on it and you might see that the tape is moving. It's probably going to be really hard to see. But you see a little ding in the tape over there? It's moving. Okay. Here comes, well, we lucked out on that. The leader pin assembly came out. Uh, typically, it will go all the way across here before it comes out. Consider yourself kind of lucky, okay? So at this point, uh, what you need to do is insert this in here again. Uh, continue to take up that tension in there. And we should get that back in, okay? I'm just going to check to make sure that it went in. Kind of looks like it is. Okay. So now we have to rotate this gear again because the uh, media cartridge is down in the gears. So we need to continue to rotate that. And as we're rotating that, now I've got to keep going the same way, excuse me. I'm going up. We're rotating that, and as we're rotating it, oh, it should have come up. Maybe I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. Okay. We're rotating it, and what happened is this gear popped up. And the reason it did is because the tape uh, came off here, uh, off from the leader assembly. So th these kinds of things can happen. I practiced this about three times before I did it, uh, turning the video on. Every time it worked just fine. But again, this let loose in this junction area here, so you couldn't get the tape out. So now we're to the point where we need to still get the tape out and we might wreck something to get it out. And we're past that one point. Let me go back the other way. See if this will work. Things are coming back and wants to reload it and get in this position here. And what we should be doing is raising this MIDI up in here. Finally we did. If you keep on going, you can see how the tape is coming out finally. Like so. And Keep on spinning it. You should be able to remove your media. I, and I think the tape came off the spool at that point. Um, I guess it didn't, it went back in. So we got the, the tape out, uh, the leader pin uh, is broken, okay? So we broke the leader pin off on the tape. So you think you got it out, 
but you didn't because there's no pin in here. Typically on an LTO tape, uh, this happens to be an LTO 4, it's a little different, but typically you're going to see this pin in here uh, which is attached to the media. Now one of the things, on these vintage tape drives, LTOs, uh, ones, uh, they're probably 15 years old. And even though the media has a shelf life of 30 years, that's just for the data on it. It doesn't mean that it's going to um, last that long. So to inspect this pin junction here, we press down one of these pins and we kind of release a little bit of the tension on this like so. I just did about a quarter of a turn and it should loosen this pin up a little bit here like so. And you want to carefully inspect this junction here where the tape and the little um, media comes together. It's kind of hard to see. If I can get the light on it right you might see it. But it's wrapped around and fits in a slot. Once you have this out you can look at this junction right here where the media and the tape go on this pin. If you see it crinkled over or a little rip on it, you know that the media is on its last leg. Okay? So it's going to fail. So, and it could fail in the load process. Uh, it could fail any place. Okay? So what you can do in a case like this, you just basically pull this back here and you can just press one of these guys in and you can rotate this to get the media back on and it's the way it should be. Um, I'm just going to get it on here a little bit. I can rotate it more. But you see this eventually fits in. You know, make sure this isn't this isn't wrapped around here and it's, it's in a good shape. And then you really need to get this pin back into this little junction here. Like step. Takes a little practice getting it back in where it should be and it should end up in a position that looks like this okay um, you might want to practice this on some defective media some junk stuff so you can unroll it and put it back on because if this is the only uh, data tape you have and the leader comes off you need to send that into a professional to have them put it back on we don't do that kind of work but if it's very sensitive data you could have hundreds of thousands, even a million dollars worth of data on here that nobody's going to assume the responsibility for except a professional organization who has errors and emissions insurance and can get it on there. They may have you assign some things, but that's carrying it to the extreme. So if you have any questions on this, feel free to call. You have our number. Uh, I'm making this for a particular customer. But even if you have questions on media removal on other things, uh, feel free to give us a call at uh, Midwest Technical Sales or RepairMyTapeDrive.com. You'll see um, those headers coming across the screen soon. And our phone number is area code 952-736-0200. And just ask for tech support. Thank you.